Harry's Wife, Part 102.35, Four People Not Looking at One Another. Again, we take to Hilary Rose of the Times to see what she also has to observe about Harry's wife. This time, the title is, Is William and Harry's Rivalry Really Thawing? It goes back a few weeks, but it's worth investigating further. So, Prince Harry has published his tribute to the Queen, and intriguingly, for the couple who've been holding hands since 2016, it's issued in his name only. Notice the jibe, of course, about hand-holding assertion of control through physical means. It's a relief to know that Harry and Harry's wife manage occasionally to get on with tasks that require two hands, such as typing a tell-all memoir and solo interviews in which you slag off your in-laws. In his heartfelt tribute, Harry writes of the Queen's commitment to duty and service, her grace and dignity, the admiration and respect she commanded on the global stage, all things he might ponder back in Monty Shit Show when he has a minute. Still, here we are, and here they are, and this weekend that walkabout raised hopes that there might be a thawing in the most public sibling rivalry since, well, I was going to say Cain and Abel, but maybe not. First there was the hoo-ha over whether Harry's wife was going to bowl moral, which may or may not have resulted in Harry missing the flight with William, Prince Andrew and the Wessexes. Instead, Harry travelled alone, and Balmoral was proclaimed a spouse-free zone, except for the Wessexes. If anyone sensed that it was a missed opportunity not to invite Fergie, with her celebrated knack for saying just the right thing, they kept it to themselves. William and Charles supposedly had dinner together that night at Burke Hall, the new king's house nearby, while Harry stayed at Balmoral with everyone else and flew back to London first thing. As for the walkabout, we can file it under either hopeful signs of reconciliation or four people spend half an hour in a park without looking at each other. Maybe it's both. Apparently, it was William's initiative, but Harry had to agree and no doubt Omid Scobie is lurking somewhere, waiting to tell us how gracious it was of him to do so. There are rumours, predictably denied, that it only happened because Harry and Harry's wife were planning a freelance royal workabout of their own. Certainly any suggestion that anyone at Frogmore Cottage punched the air and said, quick, call the Netflix crew, is categorically untrue. On arrival we were treated to the novel spectacle of Harry's wife hanging back uh, briefly before the couple split up to work uh, separate sides of the crowd. The brothers barely looked at each other. If there was any interaction at all between the sisters-in-law, I must have been blinking. Harry's wife schooled her face into a sorrowful, empathetic glance at Kate, who spent twenty years learning from the Queen without ever once stamping her foot, shouting, We can all live a life of service, and flouncing off into the sunset to make money. Harry's wife attempt to hoover Kate, which singularly failed, with an attempt at a pity play, and of course the author of the article identifying the vast gulfing class between the Princess of Wales's behaviour and that of Harry's wife. Kate seems curiously disinclined to flounce, and in any case missed the sorrowful glance, whether by accident or design, who can tell? I can tell you it was the latter. Perhaps she considered making small talk with a woman who accused her of being horrid on Oprah, and who recently made a reference to Stepford Wives that no one could describe as thinly veiled, and thought, perhaps not. Soon enough, it was all over, and William drove everyone home, including Scobie, locked in the boot, taking notes. I made that up, but he did pop up yesterday to complain bitterly about something to do with uniforms, and Harry feeling slighted yet again. Use of the lieutenant as a mouthpiece. It is perhaps too much to hope that Scobie might fall silent for a while, out of respect for the Queen. Either way, Kate is now HRH the Princess of Wales, while Harry's wife remains the Duchess of Sussex, and, in due course, we will no doubt hear her imaginative views on why that might be, evidencing, of course, her delusion. In the meantime, a joint walkabout was a show of unity by William that thrilled the crowds and would have pleased his grandmother. Whether he can stomach a repeat performance and what Harry and Harry's wife propose to make of it all remains to be seen. I do, however, leave you with news of unalloyed joy. 
Not only has Harry's wife cancelled an appearance on an American chat show, and yet another joint visit to the UN, where she and Harry were due to share goodness knows what aspects of their combined intellect, she has postponed the next episode of her podcast. Suitably scathing, as always, challenge fuel to Harry's wife, but what do people make of it below the line? And on. Personally, I think the King and Prince of Wales being very wise, even savvy, because their declarations of love for Harry and Harry's wife and invitations to join walkabouts will be widely viewed as conciliatory and generous. Therefore, when Harry's memoir is published, he will look petty, vengeful and downright nasty in contrast. His book, Advance, will be seen as 30 pieces of silver. Blobby, Harry is the big loser in this situation. He seems to have had a genuinely warm and loving relationship with his granny. Correct. His father and brother are probably far less likely to tolerate his disturbed and disturbing utterances, and even less so the weird word salad vindictiveness and endless grievances of his insensitive wife. His best hope in the future is that a nation which once respected and largely liked him as a young warrior type, full of life and good intentions, will largely ignore him as the irrelevant handbag Harry's wife has on her arm that he has now become. Ted C. I feel sorry for Harry. He and Harry's wife were invited to Balmoral by the Queen, but issues of security apparently meant they had to decline. He missed the opportunity to spend time with her before her death because of his own self-regard, and that cannot be undone. He faces a life of increasing irrelevance. Victor Cuss, very witty, respectfully disrespectful, impossible not to break into a knowing smile with the truth stripped bare so elegantly. Way to go. A rose by any other name. Mary Tomlinson. After the funeral, the government needs to exclude Harry from the line of succession. If I, if he were to become king and she queen, the monarchy would be finished. Georgina Searle. I really look forward to Hillary's comments. Laugh out loud and so true. Coriander. Seems to me that Harry's wife has dipped her toe in the royal world again to try to reignite her fading star. She's still the woman who feels scorned and revenge is still on her mind. Susan Kirby responds, she's going to milk it for as long as she can. Queenie's mum, maybe not revenge, she seems to get far more global photo opportunities when she's in the royal circle rather than out. Esther Canterville, Harry has time to reflect that all those invites to Balmoral by the Queen were turned down because Harry's wife didn't do Scottish countryside. Liz Wright, I just can't see her fitting in at Balmoral. For one thing, she couldn't wear her six-inch heeled Jimmy Chews. Can you imagine her in a pair of walking boots or brogues with a mac and headscarf? Major Eyeswater, the sooner that those two nobodies leave the UK, the better. Neither deserve to keep the titles they were gifted. 893 Monterano. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Note that William had choreographed everything so carefully that no time was Kate next to either of the gruesome twosome. Dilke Umagilia. Walkabout was strained and unfriendly. It was a show of protocol and not thawing relations. William and Kate have been at the receiving end of vituperative remarks. Cannot forgive. Harry's wife, good actress. Such hypocrisy. Alex D, not a very good actress. That look of sadness was so obviously fake. Calico Jack, how can anybody in the royal family trust these two not to repeat anything that is said or whether they're recording conversations to write another book? Slagging off the royal family is the only currency that they have. And scores of comments continuing on, noting how marvellously catty the piece is, but accurate and, of course... The fact is that the comments are representative of their dislike of Harry's wife and also of her and Harry's, Harry's behaviour. It all demonstrates that so many people resonate with what Hilary Rose writes and demonstrates the increasing unpopularity of Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.